नमस्ते एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन विल आवर स्टार्ट विल आई स्टार्ट आवर क्लास विद द ओपनिंग प्रेयर्स ओम गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओ सहना सह नौ भुन सह वीर कर्वा वह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्त विषा वह ओ शांति 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 नाउ विल चेंट महामृत्युंजय मंत्र थ्री टाइम्स टू प्रे फॉर दोज हु आर इन सफरिंग ओ त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टि वर्धनम उर्वाकम इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टि वर्धनम उर्वाकम इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टि वर्धनम उर्वाकम इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ शांति 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 वेलकम एवरी वन टूडे इज आवर एथ क्लास ऑफ द संस्कृत कोर्स टू एंड दैट ब्रिंग्स अस टू हाफ वे मार्क सो आफ्टर टूडे वी डिसाइडेड टू हैव दिस कोर्स ऑल्सो फॉर सिक्सटीन क्लासेस एक्चुअली इट बिकम्स थर्टी टू बिकॉज सिक्सटीन भगवत गीता बट फॉर ग्रामर सिक्सटीन क्लासेस जस्ट लाइक द कोर्स वन एंड टू डे इज द हाफ वे मार्क सो थैंक यू एंड कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन फॉर एवरी वन हु stayed with us and worked through the course today is also a very beautiful day today is a world sanskrit day so this thing was started a few years ago to celebrate sanskrit language its legacy to increase its usage to promote the learning of and uh, this day has been assigned and many people celebrate this day by learning sanskrit some people by speaking in sanskrit like that so it uh, fell on our one of our teaching days so it's a beautiful thing and uh, today is also the full moon day of the month of shravan as per the vedic calendar and uh, this is considered a very auspicious day it's uh, also a festival in india which is called raksha bandhan and on this festival uh, sisters tie the thread or they be call it rakhi to their brothers and brothers bow down to the sisters and pay them some gifts and also an assurance to protect because the idea was brothers being men are must uh, strength wise superior to the women so uh, and it is a day to show the respect to the women in general as well uh, in the spirit of brother and sister so it's also a day very auspicious for lord shiva so many people worship lord shiva and in india if you go to any shiva temple today would be packed it's a, uh, it's going to be very crowded day so it's a very good thing today we are uh, also studying our sanskrit we have also having our sanskrit class so 
so we'll start our class today so today uh, i want to review the sandhi and uh, we have done sandhi in the previous course quite extensively if you remember we have there were three types of sandhis swara sandhi visarga sandhi and vyanjana sandhi so swara sandhi is the vowel sandhi where vowel plus vowel so as you know that a sanskrit word can either end in vowel consonant or visarga these are the three possibilities for a word to end sandhi is between two sounds so when the two sounds come close together a sandhi takes place as per the sanskrit rules in sanskrit because every sound is represented by a specific letter and it's 100% phonetic you can represent the junction between two sounds in writing by writing two letters so in other words you can say when two letters come together the sandhi takes place so here we are referring to the two letters uh, corresponding to the last letter of the first word and the first letter of the second word that is our sandhi so a letter a word can end in either vowel consonant or visarga that is the final letter of the first word then you could have the second word starting either in vowel or consonant it cannot start in visarga so vowel plus vowel would be a vowel sandhi visarga is either followed by vowel or consonant it is called visarga sandhi so visarga sandhi is very clear it's only the consonant so consonant sandhi now there are two possibilities so consonant could have either of followed by a vowel or consonant and that would become consonant sandhi now you there is one combination vowel plus consonant that is remaining vowel plus consonant in most of the cases there is no sandhi involved here so they they normally remain as separate words there are certain circumstances and one of which we will cover today that's not common but where the sandhi rules can apply but generally there is no sandhi in gen generally no sandhi generally so today we'll focus more on consonant sandhi so i just give a quick overview of vowel and visarga sandhi which we did extensively in our first course so swara sandhi or vowel sandhi if you remember we had 
these different kinds of sandhit this uh, put here and uh, i'm pretty sure that all of you have practiced them thoroughly and are quite comfortable with it we have done many many exercises both the custom exercises as well as the words from gita and uh, the rules are very limited here a very finite number of rules this thing is also available in a flow chart and all these things are available in the repository this presentation is available in the repository on sanskrit 01 course then similarly we have the visarga sandhi rules so these are also we did quite extensively and there is also a flow chart for the visarga sandhi so you can go through it if you are uncomfortable but if you have been doing the exercises i'm pretty sure that you will not have any difficulty in these sandhis by now you would have been pretty comfortable if you if you have been doing the exercises we we did a lot of lessons and exercises related to sandhi and for any sandhi the knowledge of alphabet is critical as you can imagine and if you have not seen the alphabet file latest just download the latest file there may be a couple of changes here and there but this is the alphabet of sanskrit and to know that which ones are voiced voiced consonants which ones are aspirated all these things are put in here in a little bit more detail so for consonant sandhi which will discuss in more detail today we did that and uh, what we did not do consonants and we did not take all the rules in one class like sara like uh, vowel and visarga sandhi but we did them in different classes and uh, today i intend to do that as in one class it will be a revision as well and if there are any questions you could ask there is also a concept called pragroya sandhi which we did not discuss much pragroya sandhi simply means a sandhi is supposed to take place but it does not take place because of some particular combinations and we'll see what are those cases in which normally you would expect a sandhi to take place as per the regular rules but does not take place so pragruya sandhi is simply absence of sandhi which otherwise should have been there so the the name has been given pragruya then anuswara sandhi we discussed that when does anuswara takes place and i'll just tell you a little bit more on that these are today's topic like last time i have i'm taking from this book sanskrit subodhini so that the reason i am now trying to follow the book closely because you have a textbook and you can always refer to it and connect with what i am teaching to what is in the book so pragruya sandhi is mentioned in lesson 9 vyanjana sandhi or the consonant sandhi is mentioned in lesson 13 and anuswara sandhi is mentioned in lesson 3 of the thomas ji uh, not thomas ji sanskrit subodhini so quickly i just want to tell you the pragruya sandhi because that is very simple and there are only few cases where sandhi doesn't happen 
so main thing to remember here it's not a special sandhi rule but it's a rule where would you would expect the sandhi to take place but it does not so one of the common rules here is that long ekara let me see if i want to increase the long ekara ukara and ekara they do not change if they occur end of the dual forms so only when they occur in, at the end of dual forms what do you what do i mean by end of dual forms so if you remember the nominal declensions we have like 1a this is a dual form ending in a vanam vane vanani similarly we have geeta geete the dual form here is ending in ekara so these two dual forms ending in ekara similarly we have hari so hari hari this dual form is ending in ekara like that kirti hi kirti this dual form is ending in ekara so in those cases so long e u and a they do not change if they occur under the at the do, end of dual forms of nouns or verbs even for the verbs so labhate labhete labhante if you remember for the verbs also we have certain cases where i have to get the verb table but for the verbs also we have these cases where where these letters can come at the end of dual forms so some examples here muni atra so i told you harihi hari harayaha munihi muni munayaha two two munis two sages so muni atra normally what will you do here muni atra you will make a sandhi you will use the our rule for vowel sandhi so what rule you would use you would say nyan sandhi ekara or short or long followed by a vowel becomes yakara that's what normally you would do but here the rule says that because this long ekara is at the end of a dual form do not make the sandhi so just leave the word as it is muni atra dhenu iti similarly here we have dhenu means two cows so dhenu iti this also would be the yan sandhi otherwise but we will not do because it's a dual form so this is one rule another rule here is the final vowels of interjections like a he aho remain unchanged so like we say he rama here any with a sandhi will not take place but something like he akasha the sandhi could take place so again if you remember the vowel ayadi sandhi it will take place normally but because it's the vowel the vowel which will change is the belongs to these interjections it will not take place it if it is previous to that then its vowel is not changing it can take place but after the he the ekar of he should not undergo change that is the idea that is the rule here so there are a few more cases it is not very common to have this sandhi but it can occur at some places so just to let you know in bhagavad gita whole bhagavad gita i found only one instance there may be some more but i i checked and i could only locate one where this sandhi has taken place or this lack of sandhi you can say pragruya sandhi so the word here is vidhyanaadi ubhavapi this e and u so anadi is a word masculine word like muni 
सो अनादि डुअल केस एंड उभा उभाव अपि सो हियर द वर्ड्स आर उभाव अपि एंड यू नो दैट उभाव अपि विल संधि टेक प्लेस आ बिकम्स आ एस पर द आयादी संधि रूल आ बिकम्स आउ बिकम सो आउ बिकम्स आ फॉलो बेन इट इज फॉलोड बाय यू वाव so ubhav becomes ubhavapi so here the sandhi is taking place but between these two which otherwise would have taken place is not taking place so anadi it is it is in duel it is saying that prakrutim purusham chaiva vidhyanadi ubhavapi no both prakriti and purusha as beginningless so just one example as i told you i found and uh, this is the example from geeta so not not very common but i just wanted to bring to your attention then uh, vyanjana sandhi or the consonant so consonant sandhi rules in the last time as i told you that we did not do all in like one class in one setting in the sanskrit subodhini book in lesson 13 they are given in one place so it's a little bit easier to refer to it's difficult to form a chart for consonant sandhi because of the amount of variations involved yet you can kind of put the all the list all the rules which are more frequent rules together remember these are not the all the all all the sandhi rules i told you that we are covering maybe only 20 to 25% but the area we are covering like in which sandhi application is seen that is more than 90% or 95% and that's what your experience must have been if you went through the exercises and also through geeta verses that we can identify most of the sandhis in uh, in the vowel and visarga sandhi so our idea is to take those common rules and not burden you with all the rare kind of occurrences like pragriya sandhi we covered because it was mentioned in the book but in the course one i left out you can you can see then the whole bhagavad gita one instance of pragriya sandhi then consonant sandhi rules so again these are the important consonant sandhi rules they are not exhaustive but they should hold us in good stead when we are going through the texts that's the idea and as and when if we come across a very special situation we'll explain that so a unvoiced stop changes to voiced stop before a voiced consonant consonant or a vowel what does that mean unvoiced stop changes into a voiced stop so for that you have to look at the alphabet and you see these are the 5 by 5 matrix we have discussed it many many times 5 by 5 matrix of the consonants and then we have eight more consonants so this 5 by 5 matrix this tells you that what is the place of pronunciation and whether a vowel a consonant is voiced aspirated or what is the status so it's it's extremely scientifically oriented very well organized alphabet when it says voiced stop unvoiced stop changes into a voiced stop essentially what it means in practice that unvoiced so these are the unvoiced and these are all the voiced and 
this this uh, matrix is called five by five is the stops so as, because we know that the word in sanskrit does not end with the second so the when we refer to this five by five matrix we refer them both vertically as well as horizontally so horizontally when i refer to i say the k group or kagar kavarga ka group chavarga tavarga ta group that means when i say tavarga or ta group it means these five consonants similarly here i can say first letter second letter second letter group third letter group fourth letter group fifth letter group so just to be very familiar with this matrix and then sandhi rules would become much more easier to comprehend so if i could because this this one will not occur at the end of the word the second column second column letter as per the sanskrit rules it does not occur at the end of the word or the fourth column also does not occur at the end of the word so first and third so essentially i can write this rule in other words that first column letter changes to third column letter karas before a voiced consonant or a vowel so i can rephrase this rule for all practical purposes and that's what it is so that that becomes a bit easier that this is a bit technical language and this is something that's what it can be understood as translation translated into first column letter changes to third column letter before a voiced consonant so look at the examples here vrukshat apatat here takara is the first column consonant and akara is a vowel so it becomes dakara brukshad apatat so brukshat is the fifth case as you know like rama ramat brukshah brukshat so from the tree fell apatat is the fell so something fell down from the tree brukshad apatat that's how the sandhi will happen gramat vanam gramat is again takara is the first letter first column letter and vakara is the voiced consonant so vakara is the voiced consonant as you can see so here it becomes third it changes into third letter letter third column letter which is dakara for takara so gramat vanam gramat is the fifth case so from the village grama means village from the village to the forest vanam means forest so that's what it means from the village to the forest then the second rule says voiced stop changes to unvoiced stop before an unvoiced consonant so again we can really translate that rule for our easier understanding is this way that third column letter changes to first letter first column letter before a unvoiced consonant before an unvoiced consonant vowel is always voiced so that doesn't apply here so third column letter changes to first column letter so it's very simple as you can see now the rule are very easy to understand if it is first column letter will change to third column letter when it is followed by a voiced consonant or vowel and third column letter will change to first column letter so tad kamalam becomes tat kamalam that lotus etad sarvada 
always this. Etat sarvada. This always. So, dakara becomes takara because sakara is a unvoiced consonant. So, here if you go, so this is unvoiced. Sakara is unvoiced. So, just to make sure that you have the latest copy which is in the repository for the alphabet. I'll also show you some examples from Gita. There are, of course, plenty. This, this is a very common occurrence. So there are many examples. So 2.63, I'll just take some. So can you see which one is the, can you guess which one is the Sandhi is happening here? 263. So, Krodhat Bhavati, the very first word. You see, it's a Krodhat. Fifth case, like Ramat. So, Krodhat, because Bakara or Bhakara in this case is a voiced consonant. So, Bhakara is a voiced consonant, this one. That's why it changes to The kara, the kara third, third column letter. Krodhat bhavati, sammoha. Similarly here, usmruti bhanshat buddhi nasha. I just put the space here for easier comprehension, but otherwise normally in the text, you will find the single word here. Usmruti bhanshat buddhi nasha. And here it does not change. Buddhi nashat pranashyati because pakara happens to be the unvoiced consonant so it remains takara and 15-12 if you look at 15-12 another example So here you see if you can find out Suttat Tejo Tat Tejo That is Tad like uh, if you remember in this it's a compound word and uh, Tat Tejo Vidhi Mamakam So Tad becomes Tad because it is followed by a unvoiced consonant. Same reason why we became Tat Purusha. Even though we had Tad plus Purusha, I explained in one of the classes earlier, the Samasa name becomes Tat Purusha. So the, these two, these, these are the two rules. Then another rule is here. Initial Shakara changes to Chakara. Optionally, if preceded by a dental or stop or nasal exam, nasal. So, fifth column letters are called nasals because you need a nasal sound to pronounce them. Like, mm, nya, na, na, ma. these are called the nasals. So, here it says tat shamsati, it becomes tat shamsati. So, two changes take place. Takara becomes Chakara and this Chakara becomes Chakara. So, so this, this is a special case that the previous letter as well as the following letter both undergo, both of them become different. This becomes Chakara and this becomes Chakara. It's 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 it it also happens fairly common sandhi. So tachamsati. Similarly, this is also dental tan shamsati. Here 
it does not become this becomes the so remember this sandhi i had told you where this sandhi rule in class 3 we discussed in this course itself the dental letters change into the corresponding palatal letters when immediately before or after of any of the ever mentioned palatal letters so let me just reduce the view here so that you can potentially see the whole thing so dental letters change into the corresponding so this uh, two, two kind of changes take place dental letters change into the corresponding palatal letters when in the vicinity of these letters and they change into the cerebral letters this is tavarga when in the vicinity of any of the ever mentioned cerebral letters so we discussed this in the class 3 so i will not go in too much detail but i just wanted to point you out that sat chit here you can see takara becomes chakara because it is as, as per this rule this is a very common rule and it does appear in a lot of places so because of this rule also kind of you can see it's happening here nakara becomes nyakara and then this shakara of course changes into chakara tan chamsatya chansati it also says optional but i have put the red mark on optional because this optional things hardly ever is found in the text it uh, the book also says it's rare in texts so you uh, you just understand it's optional but for all practical purposes practice this this is what you will find generally in the books so an example in gita for 27 we also covered this in Gita class already. This verse 2 7. So I hope you can see here. Yachreyaha. So this is Yat Shreyaha. Yat Shreyaha. That is the word here. So Yat Shreyaha. Yat Shreha becomes Yat Shreha. Takara becomes Shakara and Shakara becomes Chakara. So two things are, are happening here. One is happening as per the rule I told you in the previous class, class three, and the other is this rule that initial shab changes into Chakara. Similarly, this one, fourth and third, fourth and fifth, they are the same as I just told you in class three. So, dental consonant changes to the corresponding retroflex consonant before a retroflex consonant. So, I I put it in this way, whichever way you understand better with the text. So dental letters change into the corresponding cerebral letters it's called, also called retroflex retroflex letters cerebral when in the vicinity of any of the ever mentioned cerebral letters so whichever way you find tattika takara changes into takara nakara changes into nakara chakrind hokase tattika that commentary
so this is the rule number four and five so tat tatti ka here tat damaruhu or gramat cha it becomes gramat cha same same rule is there gramat jayate gramat jayate so once you understand this remember in eugene's book he had given you a table that takara undergoes this 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 change and that becomes a little bit more overwhelming to think that i have to memorize for each combination but if you understand the general rule and then you can see how it is being applicable to takara then another rule here is dental stop changes into la lakara before lakara so tad labhate he 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 attains that so it becomes tal labhate dental stop is the kara is a dental stop if you notice here in our sandhi so this is dental the kara is a dental stop it becomes lakara tal labhate gramat lokah gramal lokah now another thing which happens is specifically for nakara so even though nakara is also dental but for nakara especially there is a special rule tan labhate so if nakara comes before lakara it changes into this letter which you may not you may not have noticed earlier it's called chandra bindu or nasalized sound so lakara becomes nasalized so nakara changes into nasalized lakara tan labha tan labhate it becomes nasalized like if you pronounce the sound of lakara in a nasalized manner that's this sound comes tan labhate devan lokah i think this is this is copy and paste problem so devan lokah i saw in bhagavad gita there is one example 439 so shraddha van labhate gyanam you see here shraddha van labhate gyanam this is not a very common thing in sanskrit so sometimes the standards show a little differently transcript like in different text sometimes they will show with y and this chandra bindu mark this is this is called chandra bindu because chandra bindu means dot over the moon literally so this is like a half moon and then there is a dot over it so that's the sign here if you look at it looks like as if a dot over the moon half moon so so shraddha ban labhate that's how it becomes so nakara becomes then nasalized lakara then another is stop to become corresponding nasal sound before nasal optionally so that is tad na tan na vak mama bang mama what does that mean is kakara if you look at it here it is the sound from the throat it's a throat sound kakara and it's occurring before makara which is a labial sound but it's a nasal sound so it can come before any of the nasal sound and the rule is saying that it changes into the corresponding nasal so kakara will change into 
nakara the throat nasal sound before any of the nasals if it comes so here even though kakara is coming before makara which is nasal sound of labial it will change into own corresponding nasal sound wang mama similarly tat mitram now the kara is the dental sound and it will change into the corresponding nasal which is nakara tan mitram again these optional i have marked red they are for the sake of possibility they are it is available but normally it is not used it's rare so you don't have to spend a lot of time on understanding the optional forms here just understand the main forms so in geeta 51 if you look at tan me so it is tat me so tat me becomes tan me to me you tell that to me then this is another one and remember all of them have been covered in different classes or in different exercises in the course one and the previous course two exercises so if you have been doing exercises this should just come to you as a revision hakara before a stop is replaced by corresponding voiced as aspirated stop optionally so again here the optional optional text is very rare so again as a possibility you know that it's optional but generally we will practice the main 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 combinations so what does that mean is tad hi tad hi so this hakara will change into the fourth letter so corresponding voice to aspirated stop means fourth letter fourth column letter that's what it means sorry fourth column letter that's that's what you can just understand that hakara will change into the corresponding fourth letter column so in case the kara it changes into dhakara in case of kakara it changes into dhakara it is baghi so it changes into ghakara because it is kakara here so it's corresponding fourth column letter if you look at in geeta 642 so here etadhi etadhi so this word is actually etad hi so it becomes etadhi it's actually etadhi etadhi even etadhi will change like that only uh, it will come with the two rules first uh, the takara will change into the voiced consonant the third column consonant because it's a voiced consonant and then it will change the hakara into the fourth column letter so etadhi again optional text is rare here so not to worry too much about it when we are going to through the rules like that it may seem like a lot and uh, that's one reason i just want to give you this as more as a reference rather than memorization if you as i told you if you would have been practicing the exercises this all 
would just be a refresh in the memory. You would already know. And sometimes, even though you may not know the rules, exact rules which is coming into place, intuitively you know that this is the right sandhi or this is the right split. So here it is saying that final nakara and rakara and nakara are doubled after a short vowel or before and before any vowel. So this is kind of a little bit confusing language. And if you simplify it, because these two letters hardly ever come in Sanskrit at the end of the word. Nakara is the main thing. So we can just simplify this rule saying final nakara of a word is doubled when preceded by a short vowel and followed by any vowel. That's a simple rule. So apatan iha. So final nakara, it is preceded by short akara and followed by another vowel ikara. So it becomes doubled. Apatan niha. Apatan means they fall here. They fell here. Agachan akasham. So this vowel could be long or short. It doesn't matter. The following vowel. The preceding vowel, previous one, it has to be short. Akara. That is the condition. So agachan akasham went to the sky. Final nakara before an unvoiced dental, palatal, or retroflex stop is replaced by an anuswara plus a sibilant home organic with the stop. So home organic means the two, cons two consonants which are pronounced from the same place. So for example, here all these are called home organic because they are all pronounced from the throat. Also, the hakara will be considered home organic. Similarly, chakara, chakara, shakara, and yakara and shakara, they are all called home organic because they are pronounced all from the lower palate, like that. And he's saying sibilant. So these three letters are called sibilant. Shakara, all the three sas. Shakara, shakara, sakara. So, what he is saying is final nakara before an unvoiced dental, palatal or retroflex stop. That means you can say first column letter, first or second column letter because those are the unvoiced. First, second column letter is replaced by then Anuswara. So when Nakara, when so it's followed by Takara, which is the first column letter. Devans Tatra. So Nakara changes into Anuswara. This is Anuswara, as you know. And the so it changes into this Anuswara plus. Sibilant home organic with the stop. So as I told you, sibilant, sibilant home organic with the stop means for Takara, this is the, we have to see sibilant home organic. So for Takara, the home organic is Sakara and that is the sibilant because these are the three sibilant letters. So it changes into Sakara. So that's that's what rule means. So if you understand the alphabet properly, the wording may seem like a bit ter terrifying here, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. So we'll, I'll show you one uh, example. Similarly, Devanscha. So here it becomes Shakara because it is followed by Chakara. And cha if you look at in the alphabet, Chakara is palatal and it is Shakara, which is the corresponding home organic sibilant. 
So one example I'll show you from Gita 1.26. So you see here words Sakhins Tatha and also the friends. Sakhi means friend. Sakhins Tatha. So this is actually the word is Sakhin plus Tatha becomes Sakhins Tatha. I provided hyphen just for sake of an easier comprehension but sakhin plus tatha is sakhin tatha so just remember this one then we have this rule final refa and he is saying original or derived from visarga don't worry about that part yet we'll we'll see later is deleted before an initial refa. So, what essentially it means is the two refa cannot come together in Sanskrit. Essentially, that's what it means. If two refa coming together, the first one is dropped and its vowel is lengthened. So, punar ramaha. So, two refa coming together, this one is dropped and the akara here becomes long. Punaramaha, like that. It's not a very common occurrence. As I told you, some of these Sandhi rules are not very commonly, but just for the sake of understanding that it can happen, we are covering those. Similarly, Mati Ramaha, Matihi Ramaha. So here, even though it's a Matihi Ramaha, what essentially is happening in Sanskrit that This thing, before it came for Visarga, it was Matir. And that's what he means, original or derived from a Visarga. So as per the Sanskrit rule, before it became Visarga, it was Matir. And because of that, it becomes like that. So before it becomes, so Sanskrit has a certain sequence in which Panini rules have to be applied. Even though one of the things we are facing all these challenges because we, we cannot study directly through the Panini rules. It requires a little bit preparation. But Panini has uh, described beautifully that how the rules come into place and the sequence. So when the sequence comes into this, Matir Ramaha, Panini says this should become Visarga. So it becomes Matihi. But then he specified that before it becoming Visarga, if it is followed by Refa, then drop this Refa, first one, and elongate it. So then it never becomes a Visarga. So that's what he means, original or derived from a Visarga. So just understand that every Visarga was Refa before it became a Visarga. That's the idea here. So a Visarga was a Refa before it became a Visarga. This is not common, much, not much, not very common. And this one is also not very common. We have discussed it also. So this is word ending in short vowel is followed by chakara or chaka, chakara. This is a very special rule only for chakara, one consonant. A chakara is inserted between the two. So kavihi, kavi chatraha. So here the it's ending in a short consonant, short vowel, sorry, kavi, and followed by chakara. A chakara comes in between. Kavi chhatra. Lakshmi chaya. Lakshmi plus chaya. So, Lakshmi chaya. This is optional. When the previous consonant is long, then inserting is optional. But when previous cons previous vowel is short, then inserting is mandatory. That's the idea here. This is, again, as I told you, it's not very common. It's generally found in samasas, not between the... So when two words come together in a samasa, 
then this kind of sandhi can take place but generally otherwise in text it's not very common so kavi means poet chhatra means so both of them both of these are example of compound words here samasa kavi chhatra one who is kavi as well as chhatra so poet kavi is poet and chhatra is a student so a student poet it's a two nouns it's a karma dhara samasa coming together he is kavi or as well as he is chhatra he is a poet as well as a student so kavi chhatra lakshmi chhaya chhaya means shadow lakshmi is the name of the either you can say a woman or mother lakshmi so lakshmi chhaya means shadow of lakshmi is a sixth key, sixth tatpurusha samasa sixth case tatpurusha samasa lakshmi chhaya so i hope if you have been doing this this did not feel like overwhelming but if you did not but not doing the exercises this could, this could feel overwhelming i can understand that so with this i want to give you a little bit class work and i'll answer the questions on the chat window class work is today is this please study this page numbers from sanskrit subodhini books and you can send your questions through chat window or you can also try if you like to solve the first three sentences of exercise 2 on page 111 so here it is right after splitting the sandhi that is the if you want to do exercise you don't have to submit it because it will be a part of the home exercise when we cover the lesson 13 uh you can just ask any questions if you have as a result of trying to solve this exercises okay so with this uh, right now it is 1003 we'll gather again around in 8 9 minutes or so so i'll mute my mic thank you welcome everyone if you have any questions uh, you can ask in the chat window there was a comment here that there was a mistake here tan labhate devan lokah so it should be same way here so we can so some devan lokah so so i'll i'll correct that in the notes uh, but uh, you get the idea that it, lakara becomes nasalized that's the main thing then anuswara sandhi and anuswara sandhi is given in the lesson 3 of sanskrit subodhini this book so here you know that there is a rule that if a word ends in mak makara and has uh, next word is a consonant then makara becomes anuswara so for example if i have a word ramam gachati so you see here makara is followed by a consonant so it should be written as it becomes a uh, anuswara ramam gachati that's how it becomes so we know this thing have done many times this anuswara ramam gachati so no matter what the consonant is this rule is very simple if the following letter is a consonant the previous makara 
change it into an anuswara. Very, very simple. But there is an optional here further. So after it changes to anuswara, then there is another option. And that option is that anuswara can further change. And this anuswara can change into the corresponding nasal of this group. So gakara is in the uh, throat group. We pronounce it through the throat. If you look at gakara, this is the one. Ka ka ga ga ga. Guttural throat group. So nasal of throat group is ang. And this is a, uh, it changes into this. Anuswara will change into the nasal of the following letter. So instead of Anuswara, we can have Ramangachati. This is the, this is the another possibility after the Anuswara can happen. So Ramam Gachati, it becomes like this. So originally it was Ramam, then Anuswara. Anuswara then can change into the nasal of the following letter. In the text, for example, if you study Gita, because I told you this is optional, this does not occur very frequently. Like if you take Ramayana or modern printing, my, my guess is, I haven't checked, but my guess is in the older manuscripts, this option was apparently quite common. That people would use this kind of thing, Ramanga Chati. So if, now if you look at the same thing and say, instead of Ramanga Chati, we have Ramam Tarati. Rama crosses, Ramam Tarati. So Ramam Tarati. So it becomes, I first it will change into Anuswara. Ramam Tarati. And then optionally, it can change it into corresponding nasal of Takara. So what is the corresponding nasal of Takara? What is the corresponding sound? So Takara is in the dental group. Nakara is the sound. So Raman Tarati. It becomes like this. Raman Tarati. So this is called Anuswara Sandhi. Where Anuswara can further go one more Sandhi, even though this is optional, in Sanskrit Subodhini book, in the exercises, he has given the exercises where this Sandhi is coming into play. So you should be familiar with this Sandhi so that you can solve those exercises. But just to understand that in the generally, at least in the modern printing printed texts, this one is far more common that Anuswara doesn't undergo change. It remains at this stage. But in Vedas, if you look at the mantras, some of the mantras will be put in this format. And one of the very common example is our Mahamratunja mantra. So we chant Trayamba Kam Yajamahe. And sometimes you might have seen the sound is Trayamba Kam Yajamahe. Like this. Be Yakara becomes nasalized. It is the same rule which is applying here. So if it is correspond for the, so we have the corresponding like nasal sounds for these five groups, but then for this yakara, refa does not have any uh, uh, nasal sound, but yakara, lakara, and vakara. This yakara, lakara, and vakara. These three letters, they have their own nasalized sound. Nya, la, wa, like that. 
So if they are the followed ones, then it can change into the corresponding nasal sounds of those letters. Not common, but it happens. And uh, here in the let in the uh, this mantra, the proper pronunciation is actually taramba kanyajamahe, the nasalized sound. So in Vedas, you cannot change it. Change it. So if you look at here, uh, what would be our sandhi here would be. So it's actually three sandhis. So three ambakam yaja mahe. So yaja mahe, if you remember from our exercises on the verbs, it's a first per first person plural. That means we worship. Yaj means to worship. We worship. Three means three. And amba means ambakam means eyes, three eyed. So this is a this is a samasa triambakam. So we worship three eyed Lord. That means Lord Shiva. In, in incidentally, today I told you today is a very auspicious day for Lord Shiva's worship. So triambakam yajamahe. That's how normally it's pronounced. So how it is? How does it become? If you take this. then we can change into this will change into yansandhi and so first it becomes an anuswara makara becomes anuswara trayambakam yajamahe and next step will become like this. So, if you look at the proper chanting of this mantra, generally you will find and that's how it's coming. Before nasalized yakara, this becomes, uh, anuswara becomes nasalized yakara in this case. As I told you in the text, it's not common, um, particularly Geet text like Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharat, modern printed text, it's not common. But in uh, our exercises in the book, it is given. So just be familiar with this Sandhi. Let me just see any comments there. Uh, So there is a question here, do we have class next Monday because Mother's Ashram is having puja on occasion of Baba's birthday and would like to participate. Yes, the class will take place uh, on the coming Monday. If for some reason some of you are not able to attend to the class, you can watch the video and uh, take the uh, make the notes. We, will, we, we are planning to have the class as a schedule for next Monday. So there is a question, can you show us how the nasalized lakara is pronounced? I already did that in the Vyanjana Sandhi. Kaan labhate. So like here, we have nasal, nasalized lakara. Where is it gone? So, ta, so if it were without nasalized here, then it would be taal labhate. Taal labhate. But because it's nasalized, it's tan labhate, tan labhate, like it becomes nasalized. You just make the sound along with nose. That's that's what nasalized means. So pronounced lakara and also along with the mouth, also the nose, use the nose. Okay, so uh, these are the questions and uh, I will just go through some of the comments and questions I received from the class, from the emails. So some of the things I received was related to translation. So first of all, I want to congratulate and thank you those who are attempting the exercises because that will improve your learning significantly. And all of you who are doing the exercises must have noticed, and I'm seeing the, the comments of appreciation from those of you who are doing the exercise that how their 
learning has improved tremendously. So some comments regarding the translation, some questions. So for example, one of the translation exercise was Nrupasya Dasas Tammunim Apashyat. And I told you that when it is Tam Munim means it means that that sage he saw that sage. So the translation we had is a servant of king saw the sage. Literally it would mean saw that sage. Now in English when it's a part of the context you see that what makes more sense to say that sage or the sage generally you will find that it will be the sage because it's very clear to which sage we are talking about. So even though the literally it would be like to that sage, in English to me it still seems like as a flow of the story because now it's a, we can have some context here, it's a part of the story. You would normally say a servant of the king saw the sage. So that, that's where we did not put that sage instead of, uh, because context will determine how English translation should be done. So translation can never be perfect. Remember always, particularly between two languages as diverse as English and Sanskrit, it's extremely difficult to have a uh, very, very accurate translation. It's, it's not a surprise that why do we have hundreds of translations of Bhagavad Gita? And uh, you will find some minor differences here and there. The reason is that these two languages are quite different and there is a possibility and Sanskrit is a very, very flexible language in the term, in the sense that one word can have many meanings, the way the words are used in different contexts, it can imply different meanings. English has its own variety and the different ways to uh, express the things uh, which Sanskrit has very differently. So just see that how does it make sense without compromising the meaning of the sentence and then you can translate accordingly. Similarly, there was a uh, concern here, Munim Prati Agachat, Sadaso Munim Prati Agachat. The servant went to the sage. Now I had mentioned in the class, Prati Agachat means normally went towards. So you could say went towards the sage. The same rule apply here. In English, when somebody is going to another person, you normally say he goes to him. But in Sanskrit, when you go to a person, you normally use the word prati. And the reason is this. In Sanskrit, when you say like he goes to a school, a school is a location. And you do not use this kind of word like prati. But in when you, when you approach a person in Sanskrit, person is not a location. So you normally use the word kind of prati to indicate that you are approaching, you are going towards that person. But in English, we use the two. So servant went to the city, servant went to the school, servant went to the city. It is all two. We use the two words only when somebody is going towards somebody, not necessarily to that person. So in English, that's where just see that what translation would make the most sense and use the word accordingly without compromising the meaning of the origin. So another thing I would like to tell you is that always listen. I am always including the link where the author himself has spoken the exercises. So please listen to those exercises that will help you that how to how the how sanskrit is pronounced and you should be able to eventually be understand by just listening the sanskrit even if you don't have the text so the, those are quite good pronunciation because author himself has done it and uh, in all the exercises we are putting the link for audio of the exercises so please listen to those exercises when you are attempting the exercises there is another question, a lot of questions related to lot and withhilling, like whether I should use would, should and what not. 
the thing is this in sanskrit lot and vidhiling have a different connotation than generally what you would have in english for would should and there is a lot of overlap between lot and vidhiling almost like to the extent they can be used interchangeably and uh, the way they are used is it's very flexible so just see the context and maybe in one of the class i can cover in more detail um, what are the different scenarios traditionally in which lot and vidhiling uh, are used but just to see that what would make sense it could be word it could be might it could be should uh, may like these are the words for vidhiling and lot is generally either request or command so please come here or you come here like that so just just use whatever the context and now many of the exercises they are becoming a paragraph kind of thing so that can help you to determine the context rather than individual sentences which is difficult to determine the context so i also received a lot of comments of appreciation of people who are telling that their learning has improved tremendously after they have been going through these classes so i'll we don't have time today but i would like to share those comments with you probably in the next class uh, thank you thank you for your hard work thank you that i'm happy that you are able to see the difference in your learning and people who are chanting they who are in the habit of chanting some sanskrit text they are saying that they can easily see now where the different sandhis are taking place where what the different meanings could be of the words so that that's a very good thing and if any of you are not experiencing that thing you please write to us we are here to help you if you have any questions if you are not able to understand something please write to us and we will try to help you out if you are not able to understand some concepts so with this i would uh, uh, just tell you that there we will post the two exercises for the lesson and the uh, uh, for the lessons 10 and 11 and again 10 and 11 from sanskrit subodhini uh, they are pretty much everything what we had covered in the last last course so this is more of a revision uh, we we are, will not have the exercise for today's class actually to in, uh, i mean for content we covered today reason is that content which we covered today is covered in lesson 13 of ejins book not ejins the sanskrit subodhini book and we would probably have in the next time that exercise is taken care so today the today's exercise will be more on the verbs from the lesson 10 and 11 from sanskrit and 10 and 11 from sanskrit subodhi so we'll post those exercises with this i'll and uh, again i want to remind you today is the word sanskrit day and we will close the class with the prayers sarve bhavantu sukhinah सर्वे सन्तु सर्वे भद्राणी पश्यन्तु मा कशि दुख भाग भवे ओं पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुद्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य शांति 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 थैंक यू